Hi, this is Mike, WB4HUC, and this video is about the internal antenna tuner of the Omni 7. Normally I use my external antenna tuner when I need one, uh, which is an Elecraft KET500. Um, I've had this Omni 7 about nine years, and I have used the internal tuner uh, from time to time, but um, I wanted to put it to a sort of a different test. Tentech advertises the internal tuner for this radio to be a wide range tuner that can match uh, SWR values as high as 10 to 1. Well, I wanted to see if that was true. So the antenna that I have connected to the radio that I'm going to be using uh, for this little test is a ZS6BKW antenna. It's a multi-band antenna with two uh, wire elements like a dipole. Uh, each of these elements is 46 feet long and it's advertised to work on five uh, HF bands without a tuner 40, 20, 17, 12, and 10 meters um, and then on the other bands uh, if you want to use it on those bands you need to use a, a wide range tuner because some of the SWR values on some bands is pretty high now you know we're using the tuner just to make the radio happy so the radio can see as close to a 50 ohm match as possible doesn't change the antenna, so how good a radiator is the antenna on these other bands? I don't know. I know that I have used it on 30 meters, and I have made uh, a couple of DX contacts on FT8 running about 50 watts. So I know it does work, uh, at least on 30 and probably on the others too. Uh, but I wouldn't, if I had a resonant antenna for one of these other bands, I wouldn't take it down and use this one instead. But if this is all you have, then this is a way to get you on the air on those other bands. So, uh, the antenna with the elements being, with the two uh, wire elements being 46 feet long, it's uh, short for 80 meters, but again, with the tuner, uh, the, man, the antenna manufacturer says you can get it to radiate, which I don't doubt, but again, if I had an 80 meter dipole up, I wouldn't replace it with this, but Let's do, let's just do some testing. So, um, I'm going to put the tuner in bypass mode. Let's go down to 3.5 megahertz. And I'm just going to press the code key at about 20 watts out. And the radio shows the SWR to be about 4.0 to 1. So, if we tune. Now that was a really short tuning cycle, maybe one second, maybe not quite that long. So what that means is, uh, apparently I've done this tuning on this frequency with this antenna before. Those settings are stored in memory. So when you hear a little short tuning, uh, it means that the radios pull those settings from the tuner memory and apply them to the tuner, and it does it faster than if it has to do a whole tuning cycle. But now that we've done that, now we're showing a 1.0 to 1 SWR, so the radio is happy. If we go up to, let's say, 3.8, put the tuner in bypass mode, well, now the SWR is even worse, 6.5 to 1. So let's tune. And again, a short tuning cycle, so those settings were had already been stored in the tuner memory. Now we're 1.1 to 1. If we go up to 39, let's go up to 4. Put the tuner in bypass. Oh, look at that. Seven, between 6.7 .7 and 7 to 1. So, again, we'll tune. And now we see about a 1.1, 1 .1, 1.2 to 1. So, that's on 80 meters, which I don't even know if the ad antenna is advertised to work on 80 meters at all. But, uh, 40, which we know is going to be okay. We're in bypass mode on the tuner. So, we're about 2.2. 1 to 1, so it would work. And we know that uh, the antenna will tune because the SWR isn't really out of whack. It's just a tad high. And 1 to 1. We go put the tuner in bypass mode. As we go up in frequency, the SWR for this antenna will go down. So 1.5 to 1. 7.2 megahertz, 1.1 to 1, at 7.3 megahertz, 1.0 to 1. So really the only place the tuner is needed would be at the very low end of the band, and maybe not even then. 2, 2 to 1 is 
is within the radio's ability to operate without the tuner and still put out uh, full power. So uh, another band we could check is 30 meters. So again, the tuner's in bypass mode, as you can see by the little symbol in the upper left-hand corner. And if we just press the code key, so 9.9 .9 to 1 SWR, it says. So this would be the test, wouldn't it, for an antenna or for a tuner that's advertised to match as high as a 10 to 1 SWR. So and now we're 1.2 to 1. So yeah, I'd say that uh, Tentec was right. This antenna, I'm sorry, this tuner can match a wide range of uh, SWR values to make the radio happy. I think 15 was also a band that wasn't real great. So we're in bypass mode again. And we're showing about 3.2 to 1. So if we tune, now we're 1.1 to 1. Go back to bypass. Let's go to the top of the band. Almost to the top of the band. Uh, what does that say? 5.2 to 1? And now we're 1.4 to 1. So I'd say Tintec was right. I'd say this uh, tuner can match those uh, high uh, SWR values. Now, I need to go back and read the book to see under what conditions it matches these high SWR. Uh, you know, if, if the antenna is extremely high impedance, it, it may not match, but I, I'd have to go back and read that. But for my purposes, this radio using the antenna that I have, it looks like I can use the antenna on these uh, other bands that require a tuner. And I can put some RF in the air. Again, you know, how great a radiator is the antenna on these bands? Maybe not great, but if it's the only antenna you have, you know, it's better than the antenna you don't have. So it gets me on the air uh, on these uh, on these other bands. And as I said, on 30 meters, I have had some success, worked a little bit of DX even uh, on the antenna on that band. So anyway, uh, this will be the end of the video. I just wanted to demonstrate um, the capability of the internal tuner on the Omni 7 to match uh, pretty high uh, SWR mismatches and I think we did that so uh, this will be the end and uh, thank you for watching